Good morning, everyone. This is Janie Seltzer, and I am delighted to be with you live today, Inauguration Day here in the United States. Let me know that you can hear me and see me, and most of all, who you are and where you are. Thank you. I see you. It looks like that's a, um, Elena. Hi, Elena. Thank you for watching. Hello. Hi, Abba. Good to see you, and Brittany, and those with you. Um, it is um, a very important day in many respects, and I have some important news to bring you. Hi, Thomas. Good morning. And it is how to be right in his sight, right in the sight of God. We have many things uh, that are going on around the world, and there are many political uh, points of view. But Jesus, the very Son of God, the Messiah, had a singular point of view. His point of view was to the kingdom. Politics change, leaders come and leaders go. Just like I said last week, nations come and nations go. Where do we keep our eyes? We certainly must, where it's incumbent upon all of us to pray for our leaders. And as such, I now pray for the new president of the United States, Joe Biden, that you would guide his steps, Lord God, that you would make him a um, servant of your heart, that you would lead those in charge to uh, do what is right in your sight. Holy Father, I pray that for each and every one of us, that we might be right in your sight for there is no other set of eyes that we need upon us but your eyes it is your heart that we desire to be in alignment with so i pray for your eyes and your heart to keep us in your care have mercy on us around the world may we see you and know you and love you and Holy Father, would you heal those who are struggling with all kinds of illnesses, body, mind, and soul. Lay your loving hand upon them and bring them into wholeness. In your, in your most beautiful name, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. I have to reach for something that the wind blew away. Ah. It's a windy day, the winds of change, shall I say. And I would so like for all of us to be able in the changing times to keep steady in step with Christ Jesus. He is our guide and our helper. And he is the one that we can put our feet on his rock. So. Let me tell you, if I didn't mention, I'm Janie Seltzer or Janie Poet. Um, I am the spiritual director for the Zig Ziglar community around the world and everyone else who'd like to be a part of this community of hope and encouragement and instruction in the word. And as Janie Poet, I want to share this poem with you. Come to the Good Shepherd grace, truth, love for you. Listen to his voice, gentle, quiet, instruction for you. Come to the stream, cool, tranquil, refreshment for you. Receive from the cup, health, wholeness, joy for you. This poem is right out of my book, which is this book, Even If, The Transforming Power of Perfect Love. And you can see the scripture that I have attached to this poem. I love this word from Isaiah. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, listen diligently and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. 
hear that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Powerful words from Isaiah 55 verses 1 through 3. And Isaiah was prophetic about the coming Messiah 700 years before he touched his, his I was going to say his feet touched earth, but actually before he was born and his feet touched earth and his feet will touch planet earth again. Come Lord Jesus. And in the meantime, may we be prepared for his coming. And how do we do that? You know, this morning I was reminded of a verse very significant to my heart. That comes from Revelation chapter 3, where the Spirit was speaking through the Apostle John. John was the only Apostle who survived for many years after the ascension of Christ. All of the other disciples, Apostles, so to explain, there are many disciples of Christ. All who follow Jesus is a disciple of Christ Jesus. The Apostles are, were a specific group of men who were called to come alongside the Lord Jesus, to, to touch him, to hear him, to learn to obey him, to learn how to carry forth the message which I now bear and people all over the world bear. We all who receive Christ essentially bear his word but not in the same way that the apostles, the original ones did. So the apostle John was sent to the island at Patmos and he was given a great vision. And that's what we have in the book of Revelation. Now in the book, briefly, there are seven letters written by the Spirit of God um, to the seven churches of Asia Minor. The only church that did not receive a rebuke was the church at Philadelphia. You can read all of this in the beginning chapters of Revelation. I'm simply going to point us right now to Revelation chapter 3 that was brought back to my heart this morning. Let me read it to you right out of my scripture. And if you have a Bible, you can pick it up or you can simply listen. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. Now, this speaks to the true opener and closer of doors. We can say this or that about what's happened here and what's happened there. But ultimately, God is the one who opens doors of opportunity. And God is the one who closes doors of opportunity. I re I've told you this before, my friends. I've often prayed, Lord God, close every door but the right one. If you're going through a difficult time and you don't know where to turn, you might, you might pray that prayer. You might also pray that he would clearly open a door of opportunity for you. Mr. Zig Ziglar did that. He prayed that way. He watched for the open door. And I pass on to you as a Christ follower, Keep your eyes on the door that opens. Do not remain stuck on the doors that close. You see, God closes doors. And we as his people must accept what he closes and anticipate what he opens. Anticipate it with joy, but anticipate it not in terms of following um, others, but anticipated in following Christ himself for the, the way the door, the gate is narrow. And we must follow his way, no matter what 
other ways may be open to us. His way is the way of truth and life. And I encourage you friends, if you are in need of a job, pray that he will close every door but the right one. If you are in need of a, a person to help you, pray that he will bring the right person to your side. We all have needs and he will take you in the right direction. However, let me just quickly say this. We are told that he is the one who is as the Spirit said in Revelation chapter 3, the one who is holy and true. That's why we stay behind him. He alone. There is no politician who is holy and true. Only Jesus, our leader, is holy and true. There is no person on earth except the Messiah Jesus who walked on earth who is holy and true. Now, now that I've said that, let me go on. The one who holds the key of David. I love old keys. I meant to bring one out here. Um, I sort of collect them from time to time when I go into antique stores. I forgot to do it. It's all right. Um, you know, you can envision an old antique key. Uh, that's what I kind of envision. He holds the key of David. Now, what was the key of David? The key of David comes from Isaiah 22. There's Isaiah again. He keeps popping up everywhere. And in Isaiah, God had rebuked the secretary to the, to the king and had given the key to a new and more faithful one. And he called it the key of David. However, this secretary, if you will, was still not the final holder of the key of David. You see, the key of David is the key to salvation. It is the key into the kingdom of God. And so, my friends, let me now focus us on that key of salvation, the key into the kingdom. Because if you are not yet secure in the kingdom, then you will not feel confident about what doors are closed or opened on your behalf. And you need that confidence. What do I mean? Well, I want you to turn with me to an, one more place in the scripture for today, and that's Romans chapter 1, where the Apostle Paul, who was late, if you will, to be called an apostle, he was called after Jesus was ascended to take the good news of the kingdom to the Gentiles. Oh, what a mm, challenging uh, assignment the Apostle Paul received. Even the original apostles did not believe that he was indeed called. That's another story, but he persevered. And the Lord confirmed to Peter that indeed Paul had been given this assignment. Now, in Romans chapter 1, Paul explains what it means that Jesus, the one and the true and holy one, has the key to the keys of the kingdom, the key, the key of David. And here is what it says in Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 16. He starts this way, the place where we all must begin. I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us 
how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a, per that a righteous person has life. Wow. Okay, sit with me a little while and let's ponder these two power-packed verses together. I looked up meanings of words, as I like to do. They take me deeper. And I discovered, first and foremost, what the word that we often hear translated gospel, and unfortunately, often has a bad ring to it now in today's world because we think of people getting pounded with the gospel. It should not be so. For the word gospel truly means good news. Though bad news circles around us, sirens blaring, uh, dire warnings uh, being spoken, the good news is news about Jesus Christ, my Savior, my leader, my Messiah, and the same for many of you. The word in the Greek, which can also, by the way, besides glad news, also means glad tidings. I have to tell you something really funny. Mr. Rubear is here with me, and he came over while I was just now speaking to you. Oh, no, Ru. Okay, he adds some humor to what otherwise could be a very serious message. <laughs> he likes paper. He likes napkins, and he likes pieces of paper. And he went over while I'm speaking, and he, and he started to grab my napkin. No, no, Rue Bear. Can't have it. I know. Really cute, right? Okay, back to the point. Good news can also be translated good, glad tidings. I bring you glad tidings. Remember the angels when the shepherds were huddled in the cold in the dark? Behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy. Well, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. It's actually a word that is you on galon, you on let me say it, let me say it again. You on galon, you on galon, and it means oh so much joy. It's a Greek word that means joy, joy, and more joy. Yes, it is glad tidings of the kingdom of Christ Jesus our Lord. So how these glad tidings became something you pound on the head of others with great terror, I will never understand. Friends, we must speak glad tidings of great joy. And that's what the Apostle Paul did. He went from town to town with glad tidings about Christ Jesus. Glad tidings that Christ Jesus, the one who had been crucified, dead and buried for three days and rose again, who is the holy and true one. This one holds the keys to the kingdom. This one holds the key of David. This one is the one who opens the door of your heart so that the kingdom of God can come to you. Yes, yes, and yes. Do you need goodness and gladness this day? I encourage you to invite the Lord Jesus by his powerful spirit by the word, by the way, 
love it, love it, love it. You who've been listening to me for a long time know that I love the word dunamis, power. And this is what it says. It is the power, the dunamis of God. What is the dunamis of God? Dunamis is where we get our word dynamite. And the dynamite of God is that Jesus holds the key of David into the kingdom of Israel, into the kingdom of God. You, my friends, can have your heart opened and brought into the kingdom today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The one who is holy and true is waiting for you to say, Come, good shepherd, I come to you. Please, good shepherd, give me that life, that joy, that peace. Come to me, good shepherd. I desire and come to the stream. I desire for the grace, the truth, and the love. I desire to listen to your voice, gentle, quiet instruction for me. I desire to come to the stream, cool, tranquil, refreshment for me. I desire to wait for the wind, divine, mysterious life for me. I desire to receive from the cup health, wholeness, joy for me. If you just said those words with me in your heart, then you have welcomed the very dunamis of God to come to you. And I can tell you without any doubt in my being that he has come. He comes with a key and opens your heart and brings you tenderly into his kingdom. I recently studied the Lord's Prayer more deeply. And I want to read it to you in a different version, a translated version from me. Father, may your name be kept holy in my life. May your kingdom become evident to all. May your will and pleasure come to pass in my heart, on earth as it is in heaven. Give to me this day your holy manna and forgive my offenses as I forgive those who have offended me. And bring me, Abba, not into testings trials and troubles but rescue me from evil yes lord jesus that is my prayer maybe it is your prayer as well the one who is holy and true desires to give you all of that goodness he desires to give you the kingdom. Fear not, little flock, he said. It is your father's good pleasure to give you his kingdom. And with that, I close today. I stand with the Apostle Paul, for I am not ashamed of the good news of Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. The Jew first 
and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from first to last by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Friends, may you be righteous, right indeed in his sight. May you hold on to the cloak of the Savior as he draws you deeper and deeper into his holy kingdom. I will see you in the kingdom today or someday if you will join me in receiving the good news. With great love for each and every one of you, I say all glory to him who is able to keep us from falling away and who will bring us with great joy into his glorious kingdom. All glory without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, power, authority, and dominion belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. Shalom, my friends. I will see you Sunday morning with my husband, Pastor Don Seltzer, at 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Would you share this garden devotional with others so that they too might receive the key into the kingdom held by the one who is holy and true? I love you. Stay close to Jesus. Goodbye.